Welcome to Focus on Seniors, a television show sponsored by Helping Seniors of Brevard County, Florida. The show is designed to make you aware of senior issues, needs, and resources available to help us age in place and with dignity. This show will help you as you develop your own aging and care plan. Now, here is your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Focus on Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is skilled home health care. Joining me for the discussion is, for the show is Nancy Deardorff, Registered Nurse, Branch Director for Gentiva Home Health Care. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you. Good to be here. It's, I have to say, it's always a pleasure to have you as a panelist. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. I well, enjoy it. I know you enjoy it. I enjoy having you. But I enjoy having you because our relationship goes back many years, and I don't mind saying that because um, I first met you when uh, you asked me to speak at the opening of uh, your Gentiva office in Titusville, Florida. It yes. was a rainy night. I didn't know where I was going. And I got there late, I still talked, and uh, we have been friends ever since that ever night. Ever since, that was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Yeah. But I think of all the topics, all the things, the radio shows, the newspaper columns, uh, these television shows that we have done together for the purpose of getting out information and helping educate seniors and those that care for seniors about the many wonderful resources we have available to do exactly what we're talking about, develop an aging and a care plan. Right. And it's so important. And I think it's going to become more important with the Affordable Health Care Act, with the changes in medical delivery, um, with the the need to somehow contain the cost of health care. We've got a, we've got a, I did a special show called Thinking Out of the Box. Mm -hmm. And I think more of our viewing audience, they need to understand the things that they can do themselves. And by understanding what home health care is and how uh, effective it can be and what it can bring to the health uh, care equation will help us in the future. So having said that, you're a registered nurse. You, you, you've you been involved with Gentiva for, for a number of years, a branch director, and you understand. But I would like for you to talk about the role of the registered nurse in home health care delivery. Okay, I'd be glad to. I think first it's important to clarify what is skilled home health care. Okay. Uh, many people don't know what it is. It, it's one of those things um, in, in, in health care, in anything, that you don't know what it is until you need it. Um, it's important to know what your resources are out there really before you need it be, to avoid that last-minute shuffle of trying to pull a care plan together. There's different types of home care. Um, what we do at Gentiva is skilled home care. And basically that is under the prescription of a doctor. You do not have to have a hospital stay in order to qualify for home health. But what we do is we carry out treatment orders for the physician. And we provide skilled nursing, skilled physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech, language pathology, uh, and we also have the assistance of home health aides and social workers in the home. And the idea behind skilled home health care is to care for somebody after, uh, maybe to help them recover after an illness or injury for those conditions that you can recover from. But more often than not, and which is uh, usually our role, is to help a person with a chronic disease process, such as heart failure, uh, coronary artery disease, diabetes. And in the cases of those diseases that don't go away, that you don't recover from, and in many cases are progressive, then our job is to help that patient and their family learn about that disease and manage that disease process with a couple of goals in mind. Number one, staying out of the hospital, and number two, staying as safe and independent 
in their own home for as long as possible. And that's really what skilled home health care is all about. Now, there are other types of home care it's important to mention, and I know that's not what our program is about today, but it's important to note that there is other types of home care that are non-skilled. Some home health cares provide transportation. Gentiva does not do that. Skilled home health care does not do that. Some home health cares provide companionship, helping people get to the doctors, cleaning their home, cooking meals. We do more of the medical side, and, and actually our role is just as I said, the purpose is to carry out the treatment orders of the physician, assess that patient, report back to that physician how that treatment plan is working, and it allows the physician to either say, okay, I'm on the right track, that treatment plan is working, or tweak that treatment plan, whether it's a medication or another type of treatment. So we are the eyes and ears of the physician in someone's private home. And we see a lot of things that doctors don't get to see in their office. You bring to, to mind a question which I have not asked you before, and this gets into the area of skilled nursing care. Generally speaking, you treat, take care of people 65 and older so that all of this help is paid for through Medicare. We do, as do most skilled uh, home health cares, take private insurance. Um, yes. Private pay, uh, very rarely. But Medicare is the primary payer. Yeah, most people, we spe Gentiva specializes in the care of senior, the senior population. So most of our patients are 65 and older. And actually, the average age of the patient that my particular branch cares for is 80. That's the average age. 80? 80 is the average age of the people. So I we fall take right care. in there. You fall right smack dab in there. Right smack dab in yes, there. Yes, you do. Because Gentiva is my choice for rehabilitation uh, therapy. And um, we'll talk about that just, just lightly this morning, but you, you made a comment. Um, have you ever had a situation where, let's say, one of the things a doctor that you might do would or do you give shots for diabetes? Uh, we do, um, but the goal isn't to go out, you're talking about insulin, the goal yes. isn't to go out and give insulin forever. Our role in home health care is to teach the patient or that loved one not only the, uh, the injection, because really that's the easy part, but the drawing up of insulin, drawing it up in that little syringe, um, and also testing blood sugar, um, so, because many times the insulin dose depends on what their blood sugar uh, reading is. So we teach all that um, so that the patient can, or the family can manage that for the patient. Our goal in home health is for the patient not to need us anymore. So that, that's how, in the long run, we're going to try to do something about driving down the cost of care. Yes. By Gentiva being... As capable as it is, you teach the patient how to administer their own medications that they, so they can do them safely. Yes. And that's part. But what my, and, and talking about the role of a skilled, of a nurse, the registered nurse in skilled home health care, what might the background be of a nurse that goes in to doing home health care like Gentiva? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. It's First of all, it's, a, it's quite a privilege to be able to have a patient open their home to you. Um, you know, in the old days, the nurse on the floor at the hospital, the old nurse ratchet, was in charge. Sometimes you had the mean nurse, and you did what he or she said, and that was it. In home yeah. care, it's a whole different story. We're in the patient's home, and we have to respect that. But at the same time, we have to command some sense of authority um, in a manner that is friendly, um, I guess what, you, what, what I'd say is you have to gain the trust of the patient because you're going into their domain and you're teaching them what they need to do for their own health, home health care. And I want to say on that note, patients have the right to agree or refuse any type of care. That's one of the patient rights. But as far as the background of an, uh, an RN or a nurse in home health, it can be varied and it very uh, largely depends on the organization. Gentiva Home Health Service is one of many uh, hundreds, thousands of, of home health agencies across the country, um, even within the state, and every company uh, is going to have their, their own rules. 
Gentiva has a strict rule, we do not take any new nurse graduates. That may not hold true. That's not the law. That's a Gentiva policy. Um, and as, as much as I love nurse graduates because they're exciting, they're, the information is fresh, I've always had a belief that it's very important for a nurse graduating from school, first and foremost, to get acute care experience, that is working in a hospital. Okay, um, I understand. I did I that myself. Um, most of the uh, my employees, my registered nurse employees, worked in the hospital. Um, it's very important that you get um, that ki kind of acute experience because basically everything that I used, I started, I should say, in home health, not as a branch director. I started in the field as a visiting nurse, going door to door, taking care of patients. And everything I learned in the hospital served me very well in home care. I had to pull from a variety of experiences in the hospital to transfer that to the home. So the background of a registered nurse for home health care is very varied, and it very much depends on the company. We require a certain level of experience before you can even apply to be a nurse with us. But there's an advantage <clears throat> to having that, uh, that broad background and that clinical experience outside of home health care, because when you come into the home health care setting, I think that you're able to establish a different relationship with a patient than you can establish in a doctor's office. And let me, let me describe why I'm saying that. Um, I had a stroke. I also had an aorta dissection. I had a hip replacement. And in every instance, I had Gentiva Home Health Care take care of me. Every time, I had almost the same nurse that came to me every time and had the same therapist. So I believe very strongly that by having the same therapist and having the same nurse, I was able to establish a relationship that let them see my progress and it enabled me to be able to ask them questions based on what they thought my progress was or what it wasn't. And I, it was especially true, well, I have, it's not, it wasn't any more true in the nurse than it was the physical therapist that you assigned to me because I happen to think the physical therapist did a, a, a tremendous job because a stroke victim, one of the one of the biggest obstacles a stroke victim has to overcome, and I'm an authority on this now because I'm a stroke yes, victim, yes. is balance. As you get older, you you naturally lose some of your balance mechanisms. Having a stroke at an older age causes more of that sense of balance to, to disappear. So she was able to provide me with exercises in the home after I left Health South Sea Pines, which really got me started on the road to recovery. But the nurse that you assigned to me, I had questions about my medication. I had questions about when to take that medication. I had questions about something that might cause constipation. That nurse was able to answer all my questions and not and always you know being inquisitive of myself I followed that up and asked some of my doctors what I was asking the nurse and I found out that the nurse was giving me extremely good advice but that nurse of yours worked with my cardiologist nurse so that there was a two-way flow of information is that something that you do with all your patients? We do. I would love to tell you that you were treated special, and you are very special to us. Um, but we do that for all of our patients. Um, the goal for a skilled nursing, or the purpose of skilled nursing, again, is to teach about that disease process. But not just what is it, not just what is that medication for, but deeper than that. What is it for? When do you take it? What are the side effects? Every medication has normal side effects that can be expected. Then there's adverse effects, effects that really aren't expected that if they're happening, we need to let the doctor know right away. How does one medication work with another medication? Um, <clears throat> excuse me, should you take it on an empty stomach? <clears throat> excuse me, should you take it with food? 
<clears throat> there's a whole um, information uh, surrounding medications. It's very important that most people don't know. And um, unfortunately, if you ask patients what their medications is all about, um, a lot of them can't tell you, or they'll just tell you what it's for. For instance, Lasix is something we see often in home care, uh, or often, uh, and people will say, oh, that's my water pill. And that's really all they can tell you. So it's very important that we go beyond what just the medication is for, but how it interacts with other medications, food, even over-the-counter medications. People don't realize prescription medications can react with over-the-counter medications. And people don't think a lot about over-the-counter medications. If you're on Coumadin, a blood thinner, there are a lot of over-the-counter medications that contain aspirin. And it's very important to know that because your doctor may want you to stay away from them because it increases or potentiates the action of that Coumadin. And then, yes, our job is to communicate with either that doctor or many times it's the physician assistant or nurse practitioner, somebody in his office that's relaying that information back and forth. Um, again, so that the physician has an opportunity to tweak, tweak that treatment plan and say, you know what, that medication's effects, side effects or adverse effects are far outweighing the benefit that that patient is getting from that medication. Let's switch it up a little bit. Or the dose is too high or the dose isn't high enough. So communication from the nurse, from the therapist, from anybody that we send you to the physician is really the key to what we do because, again, we're the eyes and the ears of the physician. He doesn't know, she doesn't know, the doctor, if their treatment plan is working unless we communicate back what those results are. Well, I, I think that um, that's an extremely good point that you make, Nancy, because being here at Health South Sea Pines or at Health South Sea Pines following my Wustoff Hospital say it brought the team approach to my rehabilitation program, moved me from Sea Pines to my home. I have the Gentiva team coming in, and in my case, I needed physical therapy. I did not need the occupational therapy or speech therapy, but you had both those available had I needed them, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I needed the physical therapy, and then I needed the nurse. And by those two people, I, I saw how they talked to each other, and one of, the, one of the greatest benefits I had from both of your therapists, uh, the nurse and the therapist, was the fact that they helped me understand my overall medication program. I came home with 18 medicines on my, uh, my sheet, had all these prescriptions, I got all this stuff filled, and it was a task just between my wife and I to sit down and figure out which pills when and which, 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 uh, which time to be given these things because they started at 2 a.m. in the hospital and ended at 10 p.m. at night. There was no way that I was going to be taking 18 medications from 2 in the morning till 10 p.m. at night. We had to group them, but your nurse helped me group and then I checked with my cardiologist and he agreed. Uh, our point, I said earlier, our goal is for the patient not to need us anymore. So we have to ask ourselves, day one when we walk in that patient's home, what are you going to do when we're no longer coming to see you? And our goal is to teach that patient again, and their support system, their family, what they need to know to manage themselves because home health care isn't forever. And we do no good if we do everything for that patient. So teaching, educating, and communicating is key. The other part of the, um, the home skilled nursing uh, care aspect the importance, I think, is the ability of your team to bring in other assets as they see that they're needed. And I, an example of that was I was scheduled for a therapy session at 4.30 one day, and uh, I didn't feel good that day. And when uh, your therapist, it turned out she came earlier. I had the time wrong. She came earlier. And um, when I described to her how I felt, she not only says, you're not going to do therapy today, I'm calling the nurse. And so, so she called the nurse, and he came by later to see me, mm -hmm. to see if I needed to go to the hospital. However, in this case, 
the nurse that you had come to see me happened to have some extra special qualifications. Yes. <laughs> this guy was extremely good. Yeah. So, uh, but I think it's important that uh, people understand also that that skilled nurse coming into the home adds a whole new uh, element of safety and protection to a family. And what are some of the other things that that skilled nurse uh, brings to a family in a home health care setting? Mm -hmm. Well, essentially, that's it's really hard to describe. And a lot of people uh, wonder, what does a nurse do? She takes my blood pressure, she listens to my lungs, she takes my temperature. But there's so much more. When a nurse is assessing a patient, basically what we're doing is we're formulating a hypothesis. What's going on with that patient? What is that temperature? What is somebody somebody's lung sounds like. And to your point of having the same nurse and therapist, that's so important because you can detect the slightest changes in a patient that if you have different people coming in and taking care of, you may not notice. Um, we can notice if your level of alertness is not quite what it used to be. And again, report that back to the physician. But as the essential role, and this is really nutshelling it because we could just go on and on about the role of a nurse, but the essential role of a nurse really is to administer the treatments that are prescribed by the doctor, to assess a patient and report back to the doctor what those assessment findings are, to uh, understand the diseases for which we're assessing to detect changes, positive or negative, and to teach. And I, I'd have to say of all of those things in home care, the, the biggest thing that we do as nurses is teach. A lot, a lot of teaching and a lot of communication. One area that I would imagine the viewing audience is not even familiar with that a skilled nursing outfit can do in a home is uh, infection control. Oh, very important, yeah. And that's extremely important, mm -hmm. and I would like for you to describe for our viewing audience what, what do we mean by infection control, and uh, what can you do in a home setting uh, to administer uh, medications? Um, well, it's, it, you know, it's, it really depends on what's going on with the patient. As far as uh, oral medication, it's very important for people to know to wash their hands before they take medication. But infection control is apropos to whatever disease process we're talking about. And many people don't understand or they say, well, I'm living with my family, it's family germs, it doesn't matter. But when you have somebody who's debilitated, um, or coming out of the hospital, they're very susceptible to infection. So our job um, is, is to look out for infection, uh, look for those signs and symptoms, um, but also prevention. Um, prevention is the key. Hand washing is huge. You, you, we hear it all the time in healthcare. There's not enough of it going on. Most uh, respiratory illnesses and a lot of other infections are transmitted by these. And we use these all the time. So yeah. it's really important that we hand wash, but not only hand wash, but hand wash correctly. Many times we take care of patients that have wounds at home, and the family's participating in that wound care. Sometimes there's long-standing wounds, and it's very important to have good, not only good hand washing hygiene, but also good technique when you're changing those dressings. And it's so easy for somebody with an open wound. Once your skin is open, it just is an open door for infection. Um, so infection control is something that we teach to all of our patients. Yeah, I use the word infection control, but I also meant to use the uh, word about IV therapy. Mm -hmm. um, many people come home from the hospital with a need. Uh, they've had a port or a pick put in their arm that has, has a, it goes through the vein and it goes down into the heart for medications. Yes. And... Um, it's certainly much cheaper for a skilled nursing organization to administer that, uh, that IV therapy in a home setting than it is to keep a person in a hospital to Very do much that. so, yeah. And we see it a lot. And, and again, any kind of portal of entry into the body um, is, a, is, is a source of potential infection. So IVs, again, you're breaking the integrity of the skin. Um, so it's important to take care of that IV site, um, uh, open wounds, um, and other types of infection. And keep in mind, we're so much more prone to infections um, if we already have an illness or, or, or injury that's on top of that. 
Um, so we're so, so much more susceptible. Even somebody with an amazing immune system that says, I'm never sick. Um, yourself, I hardly ever see you sick. I mean, I don't really remember you ever having a cold, but coming out of the hospital after a stroke, your, your whole body is uh, in a mode where it is so susceptible to infection, it's really important to look out for that because the last thing anybody needs recovering from a stroke or any other type of illness or injury is to have a, a, a superimposed infection on top of that. It just complicates thing, things, it makes recovery longer. Um, so, yeah, infection control is just as important in the home, but I want to say something really important. The chance of infection at home are much less than they are in a facility or an acute uh, hospital care setting. So, um, it's home care really is the best, uh, or, or home is the best place to be to recuperate. And of course, I'm going to say that because I'm a big proponent of home health care, but I'm in home health care because I'm a big proponent of it. Um, so, it is the best place to recuperate, and also you stand less of a chance of contracting an infection than you do in a, uh, in a hospital or a, a, a congregate uh, living facility okay. uh, or a rehab. You've talked about the value of skilled nursing in home care. You've talked about the, uh, the, uh, the teaching aspect of it. We've got a small amount of time. I would like for you to talk about the ability to develop interpersonal relationships between your team members and a patient and that how that uh, affects a patient's recovery. There, thank you. That's a very good question. Um, our registered nurses, our nurses that come to see patients aren't just nurses. They're also considered case managers. Case managers are is a term that can be overused, but what we mean by that is that nurse is overseeing the whole team. So if you're a patient and you're getting nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, a variety of different disciplines, that nurse is sort of the center of making sure they meet. And we do case conference on patients regularly. And, and, and that nurse says to the physical therapist, what kind of progress is Mr. Jones making? How is he doing? Says to the occupational therapist, so that we're all looking at the patient from the, the same point of view, even though each one of our disciplines may specialize in a different, um, in a different area of health, um, so that we all know what's going on, we're all on the same page, and that the goals are common. The last thing we want is a goal from one discipline that's juxtaposed to another discipline. Yeah. So the RN is the center of that. Nancy, we're just about out of time, and I want, I want to thank you because you always bring something to the show that... Uh, helps a viewer understand why we're talking about what we're talking about. It's so, so important. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for having yeah. me. And I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Focus on Seniors. If you have questions or comments, please call us at 321-473-7770. For more information on senior care and resources, visit our website at helpingseniorsofbrevard.com. Be sure to listen to Focus on Seniors on radio station 1300 WMEL-AM every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. And also look for us in the health section of your Florida Today Thursday newspaper for our Focus on Seniors column. I'm Joe Seckler, and I thank you for joining us today for Focus on Seniors.